Welcome to my D&D Beyond Educational Homebrewing Tutorial. I'm Nosfero, and today we look at making balanced homebrew races, starting with one of my favorites, the Soul Reaver. There are several examples around the internet for a race like this, and most of them are vastly overpowered. Since every PC is a hero in the campaign, it can feel a bit lopsided unless all the races are around the same power level. Today we look at taking the race and making a balanced version of it. I used an amazing community maintained spreadsheet to balance it to the same power as the official created races from Wizards of the Coast. In this video, I will show you where to find this spreadsheet and how to use it. Are you ready? Because we are about to begin. Let us start by introducing Detect Balance, a 5e homebrew race guide. The link to this community maintained spreadsheet is in the description below. This spreadsheet is a living sheet and is actively maintained by its community of users. Right now I'm on the official races tab to show the different graphs that there are for all the different kinds of races. There are integer point values and then there are decibel point values, but I prefer to look at the integer point values. So what we can see from this graph here is that roughly most races have around 27 to 30 power level. There are some exceptions like a 17 for the human, and then there's a 33 for the human variant. The human variant has the feet at level one. Let's take a look down. I'm gonna scroll down and we can see how they broke down each of the different point values for these different races. And some of the even uh, base races, like the dwarf here, has a base total of 20. But then when you start getting into the sub races, you start adding them up even further. They did a lot of races. There's even a race down at the bottom, Arakara, which happens to be 41, which is way more than most others. Okay, we've taken a look there. Let's take a look at the guide. The guide here is a set of tables, and each table is going to show us how many points it believes that a particular ability score or a particular racial trait is going to be valued at. And this first table here is going to kind of give us the guidelines for which we will be rating abilities. And also, too, for how we might want to rate abilities that aren't listed here. I'm going to scroll down pretty quickly so we can get an idea of just how many they have rated. The assorted racial features one is where there are quite a number of random, but maybe not so random components that just don't have an exact match in the tables above. As you can see, this sheet really is a great resource for sizing up and standardizing homebrew races. But looking at the sheet and using the sheet are two different things. So I'm going to scroll on up. And I'm going to click on the other tab where I have a list, what I believe to be balanced racial traits of the Soul Reaver class. For our first racial trait, we're going to do an ability score increase of three. So let's go over to the detect balanced spreadsheet. Let's go to the ability score increases section. There is an ASI plus three, and they rate it as a value 12. So let's go ahead and add that to our spreadsheet. Go back and put in 12, okay? Languages, we can choose a common or one other language. So let's find that, common plus one other language, that is zero, okay? It's pretty common. Creature type, we are undead plus the base creature type, which is humanoid, right? So we are an undead humanoid. So let's take a look and see if they have something about that. A type other than humanoid. Okay, it says that it's two. 
However, if you take a look at this, there are some comments, and these comments can actually fill out a lot of information. Now, undead should be rated differently because undead does not get healed by a lot of healing spells. So, this is one of those traits where we need to kind of evaluate it ourselves. Maybe read the comments, look through them. Now, I've evaluated and read them, and I kind of believe... Now, oh, see, here we have type other than humanoid, but then we also have type plus. So, I believe... Much more negative, it includes undead or construct. I believe I am going to choose negative two. Now, size, that's standard, medium or small, right? Age mm, doesn't really affect gameplay too much, so we're just going to go ahead and skip through that. Speed, 30 feet. It's pretty standard. I have a feeling that's going to be zero. Yep, okay, there it is. So go in here and we'll rate it as zero. Ancestral legacy. If you replace this race with this lineage, you keep it any of the following elements. Or if you choose this lineage at character creation, you get proficiency in two skills. So let's take a look and let's rate this based on the proficiency of two skills. So that would be, actually, I think it's up higher. Choice of two skill proficiencies, five. Okay, let's go ahead and add five. Well, I'll actually add five here. Now on the dark vision, we can see in dim light within 60 feet as if it were bright light. So let's find dark vision. That is down here in senses. So there's dark vision 60. Okay, so that is valued as three. We'll put three in there. Soul Reaver Nature has three different abilities here. Because we are undead, right? So let's take advantage against diseases, which I think is down below in assorted racial features. Advantage against diseases, it's valued at one. Do not need to sleep, fill rest with light activity. I believe that is also here, yep, at line row 170. We'll put that as value three. You don't need to eat or drink. However, you need to eat the soul energies to sustain yourself. That would be where it doesn't need to eat. However, we do need to eat, right? Because we do need to eat soul energies. So I'm actually going to rate this as a, as a zero because we still need to achieve eating per day. As a matter of fact, it almost could be a negative because you need to find soul energies. You can't just eat a steak. Now, here's where we get into a harder to assess ability, and that's the soul siphon. So since we have so many aspects to the soul siphon, let's break each part down and see if maybe we can rate each individual section. So this first section, this is a 1d4 plus con modifier necrotic damage. Let's ignore the healing effect for now. So 1d4 con, that could be like a natural weapon. Well, they say it's a 1d4. Okay. Or so they rate it as a value 1. Let's rate it as maybe a value 2. We can only do it once and once a turn, so it's not an action that we can do multiple times. Okay. Mm, that doesn't really have a value in the sheet, but we do have something that allows us to heal, and that's healing hands. Cure hit points equal to level once per day. Okay, so it's saying it's value 2. Hmm. 
feels like it should be a little bit more. It's still add a two. Maybe maybe we'll just double it. Maybe we'll add it as a four. Okay. Damage scales up at level nine. Okay. So at level nine, it becomes essentially a 1d8. So let's add two more points to this. And we can empower this equal to our proficiency bonus. So proficiency bonus scales up. We're doing healing hands. Perhaps let's make this another two, okay? So that actually makes our soul siphon roughly a, a 10, point, 10 point value. Let's take a look. See if there's anything else that's roughly that powerful. So is our soul siphon as powerful, uh, more powerful than having blind sight up to 30 feet? Maybe. Having advantage on a very common roll? I don't know about that one. It's definitely better than a 1d8 natural weapon. That's That's for sure. Is it better than AC plus one? Mm. It's not as useful as a choice of feet. That's true. Well, maybe maybe a 10 is a good value because here we look at nimble escape and nimble escape is a value eight. And that allows us to disengage or hide as a bonus action. So let's go ahead and keep it as 10. So we're looking at a power level of 32. So a power level of 32 is fairly decent. Let's take a look at the official races again. And the average races, oh gosh, it keeps popping up on us, doesn't it? The average race value is probably around 27 to 30. At least that's where I keep trying to put my races. So the Soul Reaver is around a 32, so it's a little bit powerful, but it's not as powerful, say, as an Aurora Cora, if that's how you pronounce it right. So let's go ahead and let's go forward with that. So I've actually already homebrewed this race, so let me just run through and show you briefly how I've implemented this race. Here we are. Let's go ahead and click the edit button. For my Soul Reaver race, is version one has 30 per 30 speed, medium or small. I have my large description. And then I've labeled my introduction to Soul Beaver traits. Now I've made my own images to add to this because it's one of my favorite races. So let's take a look at ability scores. Increase ability score by two or by one or three different by one. So how do we modify that? We did it by three modifiers. Each one of choose an ability score to increase by one. And that's how I handled this feature type for languages, common in one other language. So we go into modifiers and you do language common and then language choose a language. That's pretty fast as well. Our ancestral legacy, this is where we get to choose two skill proficiencies. So there you have it. We have two modifiers. Each one choose a skill. Dark vision. You can see for 60 feet in dark, as if it was bright light. So that's a modifier. You set your base dark vision to 60. And that's the only modifier we have there. Soul Reaver's nature. 
The only component of this one that we really can set in D and D Beyond is the advantage on Constitution saving throws against diseases. I do put in an action, so that way it's easy for the person to see the description that we don't need to eat. And we don't need to sleep, but we do need to eat soul energies to sustain ourselves. So now let's get into the last feature, which is the soul siphon. So this is a fairly complex one, but it's all done through one action. So it's done based off of the constitution. You are proficient with it. It's ranged. It's 1d4. The damage type is necrotic. You must display it as an attack. Range type. 10. Yes, it is 10 ranged. And we put area of effect sphere, and that's because when we... When there are deceased creatures within a 10-foot radius, you can consume all of their souls within that sphere. So that's why we have another 10. This is an action type, activation type, and then there's a long rest. Limited use. It is based off our proficiency bonus. And then at level 9, we override the dice count to 2d4. So that is it for our Soul Reaver, or for my Soul Reaver race. Let's go over what we covered today. Today we went over Detect Balance. 5e homebrew race guide and we showed how it was useful for trying to assess the power levels of not only the official races but when we create and modify other races we then took a stab at how we might size the soul reaver race based on the abilities that i chose for it and then at the very end of the video, I showed you how I implemented every single one of these pieces in D&D Beyond. If you liked what you saw, click that like button. If you enjoyed the content and want to be notified when I post more, hit that subscribe button. If you have something specific you want me to homebrew, contact me through Discord at Gaming with Nosfro or via email, both of which can be found in the description below. Thanks for watching. Until next time.